8.2 we are told that uh, the reading on the ammeter is 3.5 amps right so we have i being equals to 3.5 amps right and then 8.2.1 is saying that uh, let's calculate the total external resistance of the circuit right so now let's go to our circuit and do some analysis and you know see what's happening here so if we look uh, at our at our cell here you will see that we have uh, the positive terminal here and the negative terminal here so the current flows from positive to terminal right you cannot go you cannot bypass through the battery it has to take the longer route so the cr the current is going to flow in this manner right uh here we have a voltmeter so it's not gonna go there right and at this point here right at this point the current device right so when the current device uh a proportion of the current is gonna keep going through uh this route here and then another proportion is gonna go down through this route so because current uh has divided uh, we will know fully well that uh, the total resistance in this path will be parallel to the total resistance in this path, right? And then here, uh, the current flows as one. Uh, so this four, 4 ohm resistor here is in series, right? So we ask you calculate uh, the total external resistance of uh, the circuit, right? So that will be given by, so we have R external being equals to RP, the resistance in parallel, plus the resistance in series right let's start with the resistance in series because it's pretty much straightforward we're gonna have rs being equals to 4 ohms right and uh, we're done with that now we can calculate the resistance in parallel so this is how you calculate the resistance in parallel we say 1 divided by rp is equals to 1 divided by r1 plus 1 divided by r2 and so on depending on the paths you have right but then this r1 here it's not one resistor is the total resistance in one path and then this r2 is not one resistor is the total resistance in in a path right so here you can see full well that we have two paths uh the one with the three and the two ohm resistor and the other one with the one ohm resistor so one divided by rp is going to be equals to one divided by so let's use this path here right so that will be three plus two the total resistance on one path plus one divided by r2 the total resistance on the other path uh what is the resistance on the other path we only have one right uh so now from here we can just uh go ahead and say rp is equals to one divided by three plus two plus one divided by one to the minus one right you don't have to think very hard when you get to that step you can just do it like i'm doing it here right so rp will be equals to 0 0.83333 ohms right uh, so now we can conclude and say r external is equals to um 0 0.8333 plus uh 4 ohms right and this will be equals to 4.83 ohms yeah and that's how we essentially solve the problem now let's do 8.2.2 so 8.2.2 so 8.2.2 is saying that uh, let's calculate the reading on a v1 right uh, so let me just uh, remove these uh, lines here so it's saying that uh, let's calculate the reading on v1 so if you don't know what v1 is going to read then you're not going to be able to answer this question right so now you have to ask yourself if the voltmeter is connected across the battery and current is flowing to the external resistance what will v1 read v1 will read v external right and v external is equals to it multiply by r external right that's how you find uh, v external if uh, there was a switch somewhere and then that switch is open such that there's no current that is flowing to any external circuit then v1 would be reading emf but then here clearly the current is flowing to uh, the resistors in the external circuit right so v1 will read v external so what is it we know that it is 3.5 uh what is r external we know that r external is 4.83 right uh so i'm saying 3.5 multiplied by 4.83 and that's giving me uh 16.9 uh one volts let's move forward and do 8.2.3 so we have um 
8.2.3 so 8.2.3 saying how will the reading on volmeter v2 compared to the reading on volmeter v1 choose from smaller than equal to or greater than so we have uh, v2 and how does it compare to v1 so let's go to our second we've already established that v1 is going to read v external right and then let's look at v2 v2 is connected across at uh, this path that is in parallel right v2 is going to read vp right and v external will obviously be greater than vp right unless if we didn't have uh, this resistor here then um v external was going to be equals to vp but then in this case we have that resistor there so v external is definitely greater than vp right so v2 uh, is less than uh, that uh, reading on v1 so we can write uh, smaller than here and yeah i think that's it we can move to 8.3 now so let's do 8.3 so 8.3 is saying that elena concludes that the emf of the battery is equal to the reading on volumeter v1 um 8.3.1 uh define the term emf yeah, i'm gonna let you do that one and 8.3.2 is the learner's conclusion correct choose from yes or no uh so elena concludes that the emf of the battery is equal to the reading on uh to the reading on voltmeter v1 uh that is not true right that is not true uh so let's say no here and then we're gonna do the explanation in 8.3.3 right so define the term emf right so emf right is the reading across on a voltmeter across the terminal of the battery when there's no current flowing to the external circuit right back to what i was saying if there was no current flowing to these uh external resistors uh, that we have here then v1 would be reading emf right but then in this case current is flowing to those resistors so v1 is not reading emf but it is reading v external right that's why 8.3.1 asks you to define emf if you know how uh, if you know the definition of emf then you're going to be able to answer 8.3.2 and 8.3.3 because they're just depending on whether you know the definition of emf or not right yeah let's move to 8.4 uh, uh so 8.4 8.4 there's already some lines there so we have uh 8.4 let me just yeah erase those let me just erase those uh 8.4 is in uh switch s is now removed and replaced by volmeter v2 as shown in the diagram below right so um, instead of switch s here we have volmeter v2 we had switch s here right? but now we have volmeter uh v2 uh how will each of the following change right so let's just analyze how the current will flow when we have voltmeter a voltmeter there so the current is still flowing from the positive to the negative right so it's flowing in this manner right but then here the current is not gonna divide because we have v2 we know that our voltmeter is a very high resistance such that uh negligible currents uh, and a negligible current flows to the voltmeter right so we just assume that all the current uh just ignores the path with the voltmeter and we keep going so here we're gonna keep going we're gonna keep going we're gonna keep going and yeah that's how the current is gonna flow essentially so this uh one ohm resistor is not playing any part in this uh instance so 8.4 8.4.1 uh, 8.4.1 says how will each of the following change uh the power dissipated by the full ohm resistor right so here you have to be very careful right because uh there's three equations for power right in electric circuits so i'm gonna use p is equals to i squared multiplied by r because if i use a formula that has v then i have to calculate uh v for when uh we had the switch s and then calculate v for when we don't have a switch s right and that's just too much work so i'm just gonna take power as i squared multiplied by r this just uh makes our life extremely easy so yeah let's uh yeah uh analyze what's happening here so the resistance of um the four ohm resistor will still be the same right will still be r so here we are only worrying about the current if the current has increased then the power dissipated would have also increased if the current had went down 
then the power dissipated will also go down right so let's analyze whether the current goes up or goes down when we have v2 there the current is going to go down right because let's not forget that i is equals to v divided uh by r right so clearly um when that one ohm resistor is no longer in play the resistance is going to go out because all those three resistors they're now in series right uh resistance was initially 4.833 but then now uh the resistance is 3 plus 2 uh plus 4 which is equals to 9. so we can see that uh, the resistance has increased if the resistance uh, has increased then the current has went down right so the power dissipated here uh should be less than right should have decreased because initially we had a, a greater current but then now current uh has went down so here let's have uh decreases decreases right and then 8.4.2 8.4.2 uh the reading on v1 uh the reading on v1 the reading on v1 is going to increase right and then we're going to explain that in 8.5 right so yeah so it's one of those questions are four marks you know it's gonna be there this question and you must be prepared for it so what's going on we know fully well that uh, in our electric circuit emf is equals to ir plus i multiplied by the small r right uh v external and v internal right so we're saying that uh r external increased right when we put a voltmeter there when r external increases what's going to happen the current is going to decrease right we know that fully well but what will be the consequence of the current decreasing right uh so we're gonna have emf being equals to i multiplied by r plus i multiplied by the small r right when the current decreases this uh v value here is going to also decrease right v internal is going to decrease when the current decreases right because small r doesn't go up or go down right it's the consequence of the material used on the battery so we're saying that v internal is going to decrease but then at the same time emf cannot go up or down it remains the same right so if we're saying that v internal decrease then we need v external to increase right and then v in external is being read by voltmeter v1 right so that is exactly why we're saying that the reading on voltmeter v1 is going to increase 